It's tremendous powers that the government has never had before. And they want it because they think it'll make them better at running the economy, but they also want it because then they will be able to track the transactions of all individuals. Jay, you helped me realize that very much in uh, in the summer, you said uh, the following, that you do not want to wake up one day and realize that the dollar is no longer a world reserve, reserve currency because we just missed a technological a change. Central bank issued digital currencies. CBDC. With the CBDC. For US cent uh, digital currency. Change CBDC. For central bank digital currency, or CBDC as it's known. China has already introduced uh, a digital yuan. Uh, the ECB uh, is uh, pretty far along in its thinking. If a number of foreign, major foreign jurisdictions um, do in fact issue uh, digital currencies. Um, it's important to think how that would look uh, for the dollar. A, a key difference in, with the CBDC is that central bank will have absolute control on the rules and regulations that will determine the use of that uh, expression of central bank liability. And also we will have the technology to enforce that. Those, are, those two issues are extremely important and that makes a huge difference with respect to what, she, to what cash is. The global elite, including the director of the IMF and other central bankers of the world, met in Davos last week to discuss their central planning operations to thrust citizens across the world into a sustainable future. CBDCs, or central bank digital currencies, were of course on the agenda, and its proponents say they necessitate global cooperation. Facilitating interoperability and interlinking between different CBDCs being developed around the world will be critical if we are to fully realize their potential. China has already implemented a central bank digital currency tied to their social credit system. According to the BIS, 9 out of 10 central banks are now exploring CBDCs, including the US. And more than a quarter of them are now developing or running concrete pilots. The US Federal Reserve has been in ongoing discussions about CBDCs, and the Vice Chair, Lael Brainard, held a hearing on the topic. You're the Vice Chair for Regulation, and I just want to ensure that it's your understanding that the Fed is constrained by statutes, it, and um, if it, and that, that's why I'm asking. I, this is not supposed to be a hard question. It's supposed to be the easy opener. Uh, yes. So the um, it is uh, clear that uh, the Federal Reserve um, does not have the authority, uh, for instance, or is precluded from uh, individual accounts. So we've taken a very strong position on that uh, in the report. And uh, yes, uh, it is important um, for us to have strong support from both the executive branch and Congress. And uh, ideally that would come in the form of authorizing legislation. Okay, well, um, I, I, I think I'll, you'll hear from me on this because I, I, it seems like there's some wiggle room you're trying to show. He resorted to an indecipherable Delphic dialect known as FedSpeak. I would, I would engage in some form of uh, syntax destruction, which <laughs> sounded as though syntax I were answering the question, but in fact had not. It's not really clear right now what the government will try to do in terms of the central bank digital currency. Some of their proposals make it sound like they will do it through the banking system, which means it's basically the same thing that we have right now, just a slightly different mechanism for getting money to banks, in which case, you know, it won't have a very big effect. But the bigger proposals are to do something like China has done, which is to allow individuals rather than banks to open accounts with the Federal Reserve, our central bank. A completely different ball game it is when you start to talk about the retail, you know, central bank uh, 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 digital uh, currency, not because it's digital. I, I, I can pay this digital with my mobile, it has nothing to do with central bank digital currency. But I think the fundamental change is the underlying business model is as I, as a retail customer, as a citizen, will have an account with the central bank. I don't have just an account with a commercial bank. I have it with the central bank, which has a lot of advantages for me. It's safe, it feels good, 
But uh, yeah, there are some challenges uh, with this. And if they do that, then the Fed will be able to track every individual transaction to know everything that people are spending money on. They'll, they'll have a more effective way of implementing monetary policy because they'll be able to create inflation by injecting or increase the money supply by injecting p money directly into people's accounts. But they would also have the ability, if they wanted to take money out of the economy, to take money straight out of your bank account, essentially. Uh, yeah. Kleptocracy, the guys who are the kleptocracies. <laughs> but these are bad guys. And so it's tremendous powers that the government has never had before. And they want it because they think it'll make them better at running the economy, but they also want it because then they will be able to track the transactions of all individuals. And so that should be scary for, for us, both at a pers personal, individual, private privacy level, um, but also because it's not clear that the government is very good at managing the money supply and giving them more power to do this doesn't really seem like a good idea to me.